Hey guys, Snake here again with another Ken Snake Fix It video. And today we're going to be working on a Sony DVD home theater system. Model number DAV HDX285. Now something interesting about this, camera's out of focus for some reason. Interesting about this is that it has two model numbers. The model number on the back is actually a tiny bit different. It's actually HCD HDX285. Now, I noticed that when I was trying to look for the part, which I believe is the power board that's bad on this, um, because I was having trouble finding the original model number on the front. And I was wondering, well, what in the world's going on? Why can't I find a DAV HDX285? This other model, model kept coming up, which was the HCD HDX285. And I'm like, well, that's not the one that I want. So finally I went, I, I, you know, looked at the back and then I saw that it actually has a different uh, model number here. So I went with the power board for the HCD HDX285. Now, I, again, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is mine. So it was something that I was going to probably just throw out, but I decided to make a can snake fix it video so being that it was mine I already knew what the problem was and it just for some reason one day it just stopped powering on so let me just plug this in real quick here so I can show you it does not power on And we have nothing. And then I also made sure that I checked it with the oops, with the remote here that comes with it, just to make sure that it, maybe the power button wasn't bad or something. And it does not power on at all. I even checked the batteries on it. I even checked to make sure. That we were getting a red light out of there, which you can see on the camera. You can't see with the naked eye, but you can see it on the camera that it is working. So, all right. So anyway, um, yeah. So obviously, I'm gonna, um, um, I have a little bit of advantage on this, being that I already, being that it was mine and I knew what was going on with it, um, but. I'm not 100% sure. I'm hoping it's not anything else. So let me go ahead and grab the board real quick. Alright, here's the board that I ordered. Uh, let's open this up. Now, this board actually only cost me $8 with shipping. So. And it was the only one, so I, I, I got really lucky. Uh, open, says me. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now, one thing that I'm a little upset with myself about, there's a power board, is that when I saw um, this online, after I purchased it, I noticed there's a fuse right there. And I thought to myself, why in the world did I not open this up and check to see if that fuse is bad or blown in this thing first? Well, it's part of the learning process, I guess. Oh, shoot. This board is actually broken right here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, hold on, let me let that. Right there. I'm hoping that does not affect anything. 
It does not look like it's going to. You can see the traces on the back. That focus in. It's a pretty large trace, so it doesn't look like it's gonna it's gonna hurt anything, thankfully. Uh, yeah. So damn, I did not I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go back and look at the uh the listing and see it said, the, it said in the listing that this is working, so I'll have to see if that was pictured though, and it's just something that I missed. Anyway, I don't see any parts in here. You guys didn't hear any parts fall out, right? No, I don't think so. Alright, well, either way, let's go ahead and start diving into this thing. So, you go ahead and unplug it first. Oh, jeez. Throw that over there, and then we're going to bust out our trusty Black & Decker screwdriver here and start going to town. This should not be too difficult to open. There's some screws here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alright. You know what? I'll probably fast forward through this part. clips on the front here that won't, won't release. Let it go. There we go. Got it. So this is the uh, inside here. There's the power board right there. This is obviously the DVD housing. Housing. This is a five-disc DVD changer, by the way. That's why this is so big. So it's got the one door in the front, and then you load up to five DVDs in it, one at a time. All right. Let's see. How are we gonna do this so that you can see better? Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead <clears throat> and check the fuse and make sure that I didn't make a mistake by buying this power board. So what we want here is for the fuse to actually be working so that I don't feel like a fool. All right, and we're just gonna use the audible uh, continuity test here. So the fuse is working. Now let's check the fuse on the replacement board here and see if that's working. There you go. So both fuses are working. All right. Okay, so ho hopefully this is a nice, quick, easy video. 
Well, oh, actually, look at this. The power cord actually clips in here. Just like that. This is the power cord. So what we can do real quick is make sure that the power cord is actually working. Alright, we're going to set our multimeter here to voltage AC. And we're going to plug this in. You've got to be careful with this here. Alright, and then we can check and see if we're getting any power through here. in a way that I can try this out. Okay, oh, let me get this over here so I can see it. Alright, so we are getting 120 volts. Alright, so that's working. Let's go ahead and unplug that. And now that that's unplugged, let's go ahead and start taking out this old board. Seems to be relatively easy. We just have, whoop, got this over. I'm about to break the new, the replacement board. We just have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screw, eight screws. And then, we have a few connections here that need to be taken off. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. side. So I'll have to get those out. I'm going to go ahead and grab a pair of pliers. Okay, I should be able to just squeeze these together. And then it should just push right through. Hopefully. Okay, there's one. Oh, hmm. there we go. Perfect. That other one kind of just fell through for some reason. What the? That's got a charge in it. Okay, so that's odd. That shocked me there. That was uh, pretty weird. Huh. Okay. Not really sure. 
That really holds the charge for a while. Got to make sure that you discharge those before you uh, you definitely take that up. Okay. So this particular one is not connected to anything, which is really really odd. So give me one second here. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed some rubber gloves so I can put that in a spot um, somewhere not near me for now. There we go. Alright, so now this gets moved. It was holding the charge, that's weird. Well, hmm. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But anyway, let's get this out of the way. We'll, we'll let that uh, do its thing. All right, so lesson learned. So when you plug something in for testing and unplug it, or for replacement, whatever the case may be, if you're dealing with the power board, I would say let it discharge for about 30 minutes while it's unplugged before you actually start you know working on it all right so let's get the new board in place I'm really not sure I don't know if you can see this but this was the clip that was on the left side of it my so be yeah my left um, and it doesn't go anywhere Ah, you know what it is? It's so that this does not touch. I just put it in there. It's so that this does not touch the bottom. It's kind of like a like a stand for it. It's kind of weird. And then the other one is actually in the housing. So, all right, let's get her in. Okay, sat right in. Now we're going to go ahead and fasten it down. Okay, I have to look at the other board real quick because it's showing another spot right there. Hold on, let me move this out. Where a screw might go, but I did count the screws be ahead of time. And uh, I'm not missing a screw. And I counted all eight screws, so that's a, it's a bit odd. So well, it looks like there's a few spots that that's kind of weird. On the bottom of this here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a few spots where there's actually no no screw. There's another one right here, and then the one I'm currently working on right there that's the one right next to it so they're just actual holes at the bottom of the unit they must have used the same bottom housing for multiple multiple units okay let's go ahead and get these uh, cords in these ribbons I guess you can call them ribbons
Okay. in everything seems to be in order and in place here's the power cord go ahead and put that back in make sure that that's in its proper spot all right now for this I'm gonna go ahead and put back on these and put these rubber gloves back on just in case this thing starts going nuts and maybe if it smells like fire or something to that effect then I'm gonna grab this thing and throw it in my swimming pool okay if not then we're good to go alright moment <laughs> of truth okay here we go Okay, it's plugged in. Let's uh not seeing any smoke or fire yet. Yeah, when you're dealing with something that actually takes 120 volts from your your uh you know from your wall socket, you definitely want to take a little bit more precaution than what you do with dealing with something that's battery powered, obviously. Okay, I'm not seeing any smoke, no fires. I'm not smelling anything. Turn my, my multimeter off. Okay, looks, looks good. Let's go ahead and turn this around here. Now this on my hand in my hand, ready to pull. Quickly as possible. Okay. See if we got power. Come on, baby, give me power. Yes! It's on. There it is. It is powered on. Fan, a little fan in the back. I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't see it turning here. All right there, it is turning. No fire smell. I'm just going to give it maybe another two to three minutes just to make sure. Volume's working. So everything's going to work on the unit itself. Like I said, it is my unit. Um, I wouldn't imagine that, you know, the power supply going bad on this, that, you know, there'd be other faults because it was working perfectly um, prior to. So... Nothing. Smells like beautiful fresh air. All right, so I think we're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this. Okay. I probably should have powered it off first, but that's okay. All right. And I can go ahead and take these gloves off now. And let's go ahead and put the uh, the top back on. I mean, pretty simple here. Oh wow! Oh, we got a we got right there. Is that? Oh, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and screw everything back in. I'll uh, probably fast forward through this as well. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there.
we have that back up and running. I'm going to go ahead and grab a uh, an HDMI cable and we'll go ahead and uh, plug this up to the TV real quick. Okay. Here's one of my testing cords. I basically just uh, not zip tied, but uh, what do they call these things again? Um, oh, geez, I'm not gonna remember what they're called now. Twist ties, that's it. And put a few wires together. This is one of like three that I have. So this one has my component cable and uh, the regular component and composite. Um, the uh, coaxial, see here, coaxial, and then also HDMI. So, Big heads in the way. All right, awesome. I don't know why it's having a problem. Problem uh, focusing. All right. Well, by the way, let's go ahead and get this plugged in. Okay, and turn the TV on. Power. Wait, does it does the remote not work on the TV now? It probably needs new batteries. Great. Okay, so the remote needs batteries. Let's go ahead and power it on from here. There we go. Sorry about that. I actually just got this TV last weekend as a little tester TV, a little Samsung, $10. All right, now actually, let me go, uh, let me go pump some batteries in this real quick. Right back. Let's see if we're getting a signal. <gasps> Oh, there we go. Oh, he's a, he remote's a little finicky. Okay, so let's see if it works. Okay, it does work. All right, back on. Let's go to source. HDMI. Yeesh. You you have to hold the button down on this remote, which is really weird for it to actually send a signal. Look, I'll press the button, and a few seconds later, it decides to uh, send the signal. All right. Let's power this on. There you go. We are back in business. Now, I'm definitely not going to be playing a movie or anything on there because of uh, copyright laws and YouTube and all that. I don't want to get any little strikes or anything like that. So, anyway, uh, this was very easy. I did shock myself, which did hurt. I hurt my little I hurt my little finger right there. Obviously you're not gonna see anything on it, but that was the finger I shocked myself twice on. Cause I, I you know when you get shocked, you kinda like, well, was that a shock or am I just like tripping or something? And no, it was actually a shock. 
So I had to verify that by shocking myself yet again. So uh, anyway, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys liked it. And well, before I go, let me just say that this just proves to those of you out there who might have, you know, uh, some man mechanical savvy. Um, you know, you might not know what you're doing. You may have never messed with these things before. But, you know, you, uh, there's things like this, you, a couple bucks, you know, can, can really um, make a difference. You know, rather than throwing this out, which, would, which was what I was going to do, you know, I went ahead and spent eight bucks on a new power board for this on eBay. And there you go. My hundred and I think this was $199 originally. And it did come with uh, some speakers and stuff. Would have been thrown out and wasted. But for eight bucks, I got her back up and running. And now it can be put back into the spare bedroom where it came from. So anyway, now I'll let you guys go. Much love. Hope you guys uh, liked it. And actually, please go ahead and click that like button. Click that subscribe button. And please share the video. Have a good day.